I am going to be painted up this Thousand Sun Exalted Sorcerer using the colors being developed by TT Combat. So it's going to be interesting. Um, first time ever painted up a Thousand Sun model. So is this your professional one? Do I have to behave? Uh, you could be all right. Uh, this is the somewhat more professional one because it's part of my job one. <laughs> but you are all good. As long as you follow the normal rules of like, don't be political, don't be this, don't be that. You know what I mean? The, the common sense Twitch ones. Then you're all tickety-boo. That's the way I say about it. I am not going to be some weird overbearing control freak. It's all fairly well. But yeah, hope you're all doing well. All well. Now, I'm going to start cracking on and getting this model underway. So, the very first thing I'm going to be doing is painting the gold armor to this chappy in counterfeit gold. Now, I did prime this model. Or if I start off again. So, I primed this model using the white oh no it wasn't i use phantom ivory to prime this model okay um the reason for that is it helps with the cloak okay because i don't want to do multiple 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 coats of um ivory to cover up the gold so now what i'm going to do i'm going to paint the actual armor panels using counterfeit gold i've just got to get my head around this model <laughs> There's so much detail. Just having this thinned right down so it just flows up a bit better. How well it's going on itself or yourself. Now nah, my work doesn't get done with one coat. <laughs> All excited now. I love new paints. <laughs> Try and leave areas that are going to be blue to the best of my ability. It's all good. This is the first stage. Right, meeting time. Well, hopefully, your meeting goes smoothly for you. So much intricacy. These models is unbelievable in a great way, but also, a, oh my god, I've got to paint this way. Yeah, that's the thing. You have um, you have AC. I think it's one percent of the buildings in the United Kingdom that aren't uh, that are not like. Um, Gonna use troll skin blue as the base coat, then gonna layer up and highlight with EE blue, and then maybe do a very extreme edge highlight like the you know the brightest points with Vega blue gray. Potentially, that is the method of madness I have in my head, and I do know people would say, Why didn't I find the model? Use a black such as Black Spectre. Um, I'm a bit of a weird one. If I could, if I had a little bit more time, I would have Xenophil this uh, chappy in question. So I would have done Black Spectre. Then directly above, I would have done the Ivory or uh, White Sphere to help uh, inform me where the shadows are. Using Control skin now to block in the blue panels of the armors. It's going to take a while, but luckily with this paint here, you can thin it down nicely and it goes on nice and smooth. It may only take one coat, not multiple coats. So let's see how it comes out. With this stage, most definitely make sure you've got a nice point on your brush. Yeah, it's going on nice.
just get this troll skin blue over all the bluey bits. That's very technical talk, that is. So I know full well I'm going to have to go back round in a bit and um, we do some gold bits. But it's absolutely fine. I think a few multiple thinned coats will help. I'm thinning it a little bit more than I would normally for these uh, TT Combat paints. So I just want it as thin as possible so that I can really throw it into the recesses. And it'll flow nicely and it won't obscure any detail. Yeah, the whole the whole mindset behind this um, painting is. I'll concentrate on the armor, make sure it's all nice and tidy. Then I'll uh, concentrate on the fabrics. But I want to mitigate touching the fabric as much as possible. Because it will make it so much quicker for me to paint. It is a blue. It's not a purple blue. It's not a, uh, a ready, you know, like a purpley blue. It's not a greeny blue. None of that. I'm really being careful around the cloak area. The inside is going to, uh, the actual uh, sh shawl bits are going to stay as white as they can. The cloak, the two parts are going to have a cream inside and a purple. This will take multiple thin coats because I have extra thinness um, just to cover up the gold. You can see how strong the gold is because this blue is going over the white like no problem. But the blue, uh, the gold is really packing a punch, which is great. That's what I want it to do. Just, you can see I'm making my way around the whole model, just making sure all the gold is getting there again. But I could, I can definitely imagine painting an army of these would be definitely a labour of love. It's not going to be a two minute wham bam, thank you ma'am, the paint job is done, I'm going to crack on. These models do deserve a lot of time and effort there you go he's definitely coming together i do declare just going to paint the top of the braziers on his power pack counterfeit gold as well Okay, so let's do a scarab on the chest. I'm going to use Os Piedel Grey. Okay, to do the joints wherever I can see them, just to make them pop a little bit more. Okay. Now I'll go around with the troll, uh, troll skin blue, just to tidy up any of those little vent bits. That, except for in here, is it. Just a very small amount of it.
be okay so when i'm looking at the artwork for the miniature it is a nice rich purple so i'm going to attempt to use cannot pronounce that for love nor money all right Taleocon, Taleocan, red. It's a really nice, deep, burgundy red. All right, that's very close to a purple without being a purple. All right, so I'm going to use that for the outer parts of the cloaks. So let's crack on. Hopefully, because I'm going over very pale white, this should go on really nice and easy. Oh, look at that. That's really nice. Hopefully you can see that. That's coming together nicely. That's a really nice contrasting colour compared to, um, oh, in, you know, comparing with the golden blue okay i'll we'll give that a moment to dry at the bottom layer to dry because i don't want to be painting another layer of this Talakan, Talakan Red. It's probably pronounced completely different, but I can't read the pop. <laughs> okay. And then let's do one more third and final layer for this outside one. Make sure it's nice and vibrant. Now the box art doesn't show that being gold, but I think that does look quite nice being gold. All right, let's get some color going on the undercloth of the inside. Now, there you go. Let's use mummified khaki, the inside of these cloaks, okay? So we're going to use mummified khaki for the inside of that one. Hopefully this will go on nice and evenly because of the white base coat. Jeez. Yeah. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. Gone on really nice and smooth, and I'll just get this worst bit of this under bit done. I am not going to worry too much to try and get underneath every single nook and cranny. I am going to try and rotate it just a little bit. This is where sub assembly would come into its own element. I need to go around with the red again in a bit and just. Ready up some bits, but the red will go over the khaki really quite easily. There you go. So yeah, we'll do a second coat just to make sure that's nice and solid. Now this is going to be an interesting bit. This one here.
see the difference now with that second coat. That second layer on there. Hopefully you can see that coming through. Nice and solid. But it's coming together nicely. Get the paint brushes to one side. That is the end result of the modified khaki put in the under underside of the cloaks there you go and then you obviously tidy it up with the red the tarkalan red for any overspills but there you go all right so next color we're gonna do next color we're gonna do we're gonna grab one of my favorite uh pinks out of the range that i've seen so far horrific pink all right we're gonna do the wrapping of the stave of the staff however you wish to pronounce it and any little bits of rope work and um, beads and stuff as well Really nice vibrant pink. That is very, that is a very zinchy pink. That's really vibrant. And that's one coat, one sheet. Ah, I love that. As I said, any beads, any rope, stuff like that will be done in this color. Obviously, if I can't reach them that well, and they're not in clear line of sight, I am going to hang fire. And then I'll touch up that little spill in a minute. But that is the horrific pink done. It's such a great colour over, it sounds obvious, over a light prime it really 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 works all right so what is the next color we're going to do let us crack on with these braziers here i think some form of green flame would look quite interesting So I think a nice one to base coat it with, Ogre Boogie. And you'll see how that comes out. So we're going to use Ogre Boogie for the upper flames. Go for that kind of ethereal witch flame look. with the white base coat underneath that ogre boogie has done wonders Absolute wonders I ask. Now, let's try and find a nice deep brown for some leather work, like the the belt and some you know storage units. Thank you very much, Clock. I'm really, really chuffed with it so far. Like genuinely. Um once all is once it's all base coated. 
I could see people just um, put on a gentle wash and you're done. You are genuinely done. Um, obviously, then you, if you want to, you can highlight some little bits and stuff like that. But I could see this being, as GW would put it, battle ready. Yeah, they, they, they do. They do look Thousand Suns. It sounds obvious. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use Trench Mud. Quite a nice, rich uh, mid-tone brown. I'm going to use that to just pelt, uh, pelt? Paint the belt. And like the canisters and stuff like that. I think that would be quite cool. But the... The red for the back is burgundy, which was Talitan, Talacan red. That's gone on really well. I really like it for a burgundy. Really genuinely enjoy it. Let's get this French mud out then. You can be a bit cheeky as well. You can use this colour to hide any bits that you're not 100% sure what they are. Around the back. Because it's such a neutral brown. It'll work for multiple things. Leather, fabrics, all sorts. Containers, storage units, bottles. This model's just coming together so well. So well. I was really nervous. Well, nervous is a strong term. I say I was quite apprehensive. Because Zinch models in general, which include thousands of them, are normally very intricate. There's a lot going on. And they're very iconic. But I'm really, really, really pleased how this came coming together. That I am comfortable to say is the mud, uh, trench mud, brown used for leathers and pouches and stuff like that to make them just slightly a different colour. They still look like a leather to me. Okay, really nice and easy for that one. So now is going to be the important parts. So I'm going to use Phantom Ivory a minute just to touch up any of the white bits that I've accidentally touched. All right. But also I'm going to use it for any of these like eye gem parts. Okay. So this is going to be used fairly important spots, let's just say, because you've got eyes up there got quite a bit all right so just take your time with this one all right i do love the color match that tt combat i've seemed to be able to pull out because as i said i've sprayed this with phantom ivory there's a very pale off white. And I've kept my best. But some bits have overspilled. It just works. You can touch it back up. The eyes, I'm doing it with this white. Uh, this, you know, phantom ivory. Just to give me a little bit of brightness when I work. Hopefully some wash magic.
gonna do the swirly bit in his there. I may even do may even do that with ogre boogie. Just making sure it's nice and solid. I'll touch it back up with the gold in a bit. Frame it, the gold and the blue to frame it a little bit better. Frying up any gold that I need to. There you go, we're getting there. When are the paints coming out for sale as they are very nice? There is a Kickstarter for these paints in the very near future. Um, there's still a little bit more development going on, but they are coming out, trust me, very, very soon. So the way the Kickstarter can work is then, you know, people can step in at a great price point and they can see the development and, you know, as it gets more and more popular, we can add paints, washes, so on and so forth. But that is the Phantom White, or Phantom Ivory, sorry. Phantom Ivory in all the little jemmy bits, tidying up the little scroll work and everything. Really working great. So, now is the parts that I was fearing. <laughs> the silver is not too bad. It's going to be the yellow. Well, I shall be supporting as I love that brown and green. It really, they, they work wonders. They genuinely, genuinely work wonders. I've used many a paint in the past and these ones, touch wood, seem to be knocking it out of the park. All right. So I'm going to be using gun metal a minute for any of the last metallics. Then I'll be doing the yellow go from there. Wish me luck. So gun metal on the last of the metallics, all right? So the last of the metallics will be like these little bits around the bottom, little trinkets, and the buckles, and the exhaust, or cables, let's say. Yeah, but they genuinely they seem to be working. I don't need to I don't need to do a QVC thing to you lot. You can see it yourself. I don't need to sell it. You know? They're working. They're doing They're doing what they're supposed to do. They're so, you know, you put it down, it covers up that area and it doesn't blotch block in the detail. You know, that is fundamentally what a miniature paint should do you know in a core fundamental capacity which is great it makes it so much easier to paint the metallics i want to say are probably one of the runaway stars here i've had metallics in the past that just don't Want the cover? You know, to the point that I've had to prime the area, uh, paint the area grey, then a lighter grey, then go on the silver to give it a chance to actually work. These ones, they go straight on. And it's not some wizardy woo of it's just the paint works. That's me sounding really technical going wizardy woo, but it's true. And the paints go on so easily. It allows you to be more relaxed, and then when you're more relaxed, you're generally better at your painting, you're better at whatever you're doing. Not just miniature off of being, but just anything in general. 
you relaxed, you just enjoy the process even more. So that is the gunmetal done on any of these little pointy leftover bits. If you had a bolt or you had a bolt pistol, blade, something like that, it'd be perfect for that. All right. But this guy here, he's got his stave. He is using traditional, traditional psychic sorcery. It's a nice base coat silver. Really, really nice base coat silver. You can tell it's a silver, but it's not like bling bling in your face. Okay. So, this is the bit I was fearing. The yellow. Dun, dun, dun. Hazard stripe yellow. Funnily enough, we're going to be doing stripes with the yellow on this thousand suns what name is more appropriate except for if this is an iron warriors model has a striped yellow really nice traditional looking yellow so let's use this on the little um stripes on the helmet and so on and so forth and get this on the home straight what a nice point for this all right now I'm just going to make sure I've got the box art, so I've got it all good. Alright. Don't worry about overspilling onto the gold, it's absolutely fine. So we'll do another thin layer. After this one's dried. Cool. Clean the brush. Raiding time. Oh, oh! I is excited. Oh, I'm happy that I'm three hours in and I'm just coming to the end of the base coating. I was hoping it would be a bit quicker, but there is a lot. I'm just going to go back over the gold with the counterfeit gold. Just to tidy up. Um, where I've overspilt. But yeah, what's the plan for, uh, for the rest of the day for everyone? I mean, try not to burp. So I've just used the Hazard Stripe Yellow, funnily enough named, Hazard Stripe Yellow, just to do all the weird bumblebee effect stripes and tidy the back up. Really liking how he's coming together. Let's try some Blood Red a minute. Let's try some Blood Red. We're going to do the gems in that. Not jealous of you at all being able to enjoy the sun. <laughs> it's all good.
Get with the gold. Always struggle with Space Marine eyes. Other eyes and stuff seem to be alright, but Marine eyes. They seem to always have a bit of fun. Okay, dokily so that is the red done for those lenses and everything like that. We'll see how that comes out after some washes. I'm going to use some thinning medium and a black wash in somewhat a 50-50 mix in the old tub, right? The old mixing tub. Go all over this model except for the uh the tabards and the fabric okay see how this comes out the reason why i thinned it down is then it doesn't stain the surface as much I may actually do the vast majority of the model in this color this wash because it seems to be doing such a nice job And just spread it around so it doesn't fall and discolor heavily. Get the tops of these braziers. But I will not black wash up all this flame. Because to me it makes no sense. Why would you black wash a flame? Let's get this burgundy sorted. This one, unless uh, if people weren't around before, that burgundy is the Talak Can Red. Talak Can Red. Really, really nice. The thinning medium that TT Combat's developing, and some black wash. 50 50 mix, maybe a little bit stronger on the thinning medium, maybe three parts medium to two parts uh, acrylic black ink. That's really worked wonders. I am going to texture up the base and get that going. So I'm going to use some um, terracotta color texture, then get it going. A uh, one little hot tip I would say for a texture case. I learned this the hard way. Do not use a hair dryer to try and dry it. Problem is, you make it develop a skin on the top, and then it doesn't actually develop the texture. It was all weird and funky when it's then trying to dry. Just let it dry normally. And I'm using a small end of the texture spreading tool just to poke it into all those recesses. Just received. Uh, my nice insert for wet pack. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I have to have a goosey at that when I get a chance. The old one got funky. Yeah. 
after a while they do um, uh, mature, should we say? And I'm deliberately tapping the texture tool up and down to just add relief and texture. I do think this one here for being a very presentable tabletop, this, this is not going to win you awards, but it's nice and tidy, nice and neat. I think I am quite happy leaving it there. And it's shown off all paints that TT Combat are developing. The only thing they haven't developed at this moment in time is the texture paste, which I've used. 